You know, I think the tides have changed in recent years and, uh, you know, conventional media uh, has is used to kind of, they email you, they want a conversation. That, you know, I think sometimes they're surprised you don't leap to, to have that conversation or, you know, I think one of the, the problems with the traditional press is that it's hard to know where their heart is or like where they are on a topic. And so conversations with them have become um, a bit of a razor's edge, frankly. Well, they're, they're also like, deeply influenced by money like that there's there's no there, that raccoon dog thing i guarantee you there are some people behind the scenes that are trying to come up with some sort of a plausible scenario that's alternative to the lab leak theory and that's why they're coming up with this it's not like, the, the people that i've talked to that understand this i've had m many conversations with virologists and uh, evolutionary biologists who explain to me why this is most likely a lab leak. No one has, no, they're not arguing with this. So when someone comes along with this and they're saying, oh, we found it, like, no, you didn't. No, you, you know you didn't. You're, you're writing this article because you're being influenced to do so. Like someone is telling them that this is a good thing to put out. Someone is giving them information and saying, we, we believe this and you should print this. Well, and it's there's some there's money behind that that doesn't reach independent journalism. That's the difference. Like the, the amount of money behind an advertisement that goes to CNN or an advertisement that goes to the New York Times, it's a different thing than what goes to Breaking Points with Crystal and Sagar. Than what goes to Matt Taibbi's Substack. There's none there. There's no influence there. These people are influenced by gigantic corporations. That's why they put out articles that are not plausible. That's why people don't trust them anymore. That's why, you know, people think they're fucking shady. Yeah, well, the, the, you're right. They're incentivized by a whole set of things that are not obvious from yes. the articles themselves. I'm a huge fan of what Sagar and Crystal have done and are doing. Me too. Huge fan. It's incredible. It's incredible and it's important. And, and they're so fucking honest. Like, they, they give you what is their actual take on whatever is going on in the news, and it's well-researched. And the, the fact that that exists now is so important because if it was not for independent journalism, we would be in a pickle. We would be in a really bad state because a lot of people got duped by the pharmacy, the pharmacological industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the, the medical industry, the industrial military industrial complex. They've been duped by so many different companies and corporations that have a vested interest in getting one narrative out. And if you can get that narrative out through the traditional pipelines of mainstream media with no one fact checking, no one interfering, no independent journalist saying, actually, that's not true at all. Here's why they did that. This was the influence. Here's where the money is. We have emails. We can show you they were influenced. If it wasn't for them, we would be fucked. And it's one of the beautiful things about the internet today. The internet today allows people like that to thrive because these mainstream media corporations are so corrupt. They're so obviously indebted to the companies that pay for their advertising. Yeah, I mean, my, my initial experience of them was uh, long before I had a podcast, did an interview with traditional media, and then it comes out and um, I was... They didn't say anything bad, but my quote was given to somebody else. Their quote was given to me. Yeah. And then you say, and I wrote and said, hey, you know, th this is factually incorrect. I didn't say this. First of all, I'm not a medical doctor. This, uh, you got the, they, they swapped the names either accidentally. And then I got this, oh, well, you know, kind of response, like too late, you know. And, but when it's- No your, retraction. But what, no. And when it's your neck on the line, you know, it's your name. I mean, in yeah. science, all we have is our reputations. Yeah. In science or in anything, that's all we have is our reputation. So it's a scary thing to hand that over to somebody. So unless it's a particular- few set of sources. I generally decline traditional media conversations. The other, and now the, the fight isn't just for traditional, you know, over media, traditional or independent, you know, the universities too, right? We we're asking, I have to say, and I'm not, this is not a, to be, uh, you know, politically correct or incorrect. Stanford has been very good about letting different faculty at Stanford voice their differing opinions on everything from COVID to politics, you know, there's a free speech, um, a right to free speech uh, petition that's been going around the campus for a while. And you can find this online. Now, a lot of people also will hear things about, oh, I hear on college campuses like Stanford, you're hearing, getting a lot of pressure to do this or a lot of pressure to do that. Yeah, there, there are pressures. 
from students and top down. Uh, listen, students are under pressure. Administrators are under pressure. Faculty under pressure. But Stanford has been very good about allowing people to have their own independent social media channels and talk to the public the way they feel is best. That's excellent. And I and I, I have to, to say hear. it's one of the things that makes me really proud to be there. It's an amazing place too. But if you and I'm not going to throw out names here because it's not my place and they should probably just come on the podcast separately, but you've got people at every end of the of the major debates out there about public health and everything in between on Twitter fewer on Instagram but on Twitter voicing their opinion and honestly I think it's beautiful that they are allowed to do it well they're allowed to now because Elon bought Twitter but before Elon bought Twitter people were being silenced for things that have been absolutely proven to be correct which is crazy what the value that he's given back to people in the last what has it been four or five months since he's been in there yeah is tremendous I mean I remember people picking on oh it's this feature that feature we're gonna have to buy a verified check or whatever you know these these things that when you compare that to the ability for people to have honest open discourse honest for them because you know there's no regulator yeah so that to me is incredible and and fundamentally important he's given people their voice back yeah and that includes both sides that's what's often not not stated is that people on both sides are starting to get the axe mostly on one side but it's it's really incredible and I think we're I'm hopeful you know I, I don't I'm a live and let live type person I really as long as people aren't harming other people I truly just encourage people to do what feels right to as them as we should all be. you know as we should all it's be. kind of bananas where we went between you know in the last few years